Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm a life and style blogger at Strawberry Chic and in today's video I'm going to share all of my tips and tricks on how to grow an authentic Instagram following. So this is going to be part of my blogger series. I am creating a playlist all about blogging if you are curious about starting a blog or building a blog or all that good stuff then definitely check out that playlist. I will have it linked down below. And in today's video, I'm going to share how to grow an authentic Instagram following. I know I will get a couple questions on the scarf and how I tied it. So if you want to see a tutorial on that, I have it saved in my highlights over on Instagram. So I will link that for you guys down below. But let's get into today's video. Instagram and I have definitely had a love-hate relationship. That is for sure. Um, I think everyone has gone through an Instagram rut, at least if you are a blogger or if your business is centered around Instagram, I'm sure you have been frustrated at the platform before because the algorithm changed and all that, all that drama that went down. And I would just say, stop worrying about the algorithm. You can't do anything about it. So just learn the new way to capitalize on the platform. And Instagram is still the main focus of brands and bloggers, even though I sadly kind of wish that would go away. It's just something you have to accept and just try to utilize it as much as you can as a profitable platform for your business. I've had my thoughts and opinions on Instagram. I will also link down a post that I did um, a couple weeks ago on my relationship with Instagram. So if you're wanting to see what I'm talking about, then check out that post. But recently I just switched my attitude and started to just change it up and how I was using the platform and I can say my my opinion on Instagram is changing and I've had a lot of fun with it recently and now that I've incorporated some of these tips and tricks that I'm going to share with you guys I have noticed a significant improvement in my engagement and growth over on Instagram so if you're curious about how I did that then keep watching the first thing that I had to prioritize was posting consistently. I am so guilty of going a week, if not longer, embarrassingly, not posting at all on Instagram. And for one, it's because I overanalyze like the, the image I was going to post. I was obsessed with my Instagram feed and I didn't want to mess it up. I will say if you are like that, just get over it because it's better off to post. Obviously, you want to post quality content and content that you're proud of but don't hold back a photo just because of your Instagram feed. People won't see your posts if you're not posting on the platform. So number one, you have to get consistent, even if it's just every other day, three times a week, even though that isn't ideal. Ideally, it would be posting every single day. And the more you post and the more people are engaging with your content, the more likely they will see it on your feed and the more likely Instagram will kind of show that to to show you off to new potential followers. So just get in a consistent posting schedule and you will see a big improvement in your following. Number two is start investing in the people that are already following you on the platform. Don't just sit there and try to continually grow your following, but really engage and talk to the people who are already invested in what you're sharing. I've noticed a big difference in my engagement and all of that type of stuff now that I'm actually going to my followers pages and liking and commenting on their photos there's a lot more DMs and my activity just on Instagram overall has improved and that's where I find the value of Instagram before I did that I hated the platform just because I would get on there post because I had to and then get like a couple photos and hope that I got more likes from it even though I didn't and then I would just sign off. Um, I kind of just used it like any other person would, not really a business, and that's not the way to go about it. So I would just watch stories, and I just dreaded. I always felt guilty and felt like I had to post. So now that I'm actually talking to you guys who are following me, it has been way more enjoyable, and I definitely think that helps with growing your following because, for one, then those people will start you know, commenting on your stuff, and the more likes and comments that you get on the photo, the more people that Instagram will show that image to and the better off you will be at growing your following. Number three is to stick with your niche. And what I mean by that is if you have developed your Instagram and you just talk about fashion, all that good stuff, then keep posting images on fashion. Don't sit there and be like, oh, here's what I ate. And you know, everyone used to post what they were eating at the time. Save that for your Instagram stories and keep your niche on your feed. I've also noticed now that I'm actually posting photos of myself, I don't know why I would post a photo of myself every other photo 
at least that's what I used to do. My engagement was crap, but now that I just post photos that I'm in, my engagement has been a lot better and my growth on Instagram has been a lot better. And I'm not saying you have to create a feed that's successful just with your face in it, but my followers are there because they like my fashion and beauty sense. So I have to show my fashion and beauty. I can't just hide behind my camera and show a picture because it's pretty. Does that make sense? Just whatever you've been posting, just kind of stick with that niche because that's why people are following you and that's why they want to see more from your account. This one is definitely going to seem really counterintuitive, but my next tip is to actually delete and block the spammy followers or the people that you know aren't there because they want to see your content. And I know it's really hard to get over. I just deleted 500 followers last night. It really doesn't matter because those people aren't there to actually see what I'm posting. They're not there to buy what I'm wearing, that type of thing. So they're really not there for the right reason. Um, I have a ton of guys following me. I just started deleting them all or blocking the creepy ones. I've always blocked the creepy ones that DM me, but um, I had no idea that you could actually delete followers. So I did that last night, deleted 500 people. But when you do that, your engagement scores are going to be so much better. For one, brands care about your engagement score a lot more than they care about your followers these days. And it also helps when you have a really good engagement. Instagram will be more likely to show you on the explore page and show you to the people that are there to follow you. So the spammy accounts are the ones that don't have any profile pictures. They've never posted on Instagram. They're likely just a bot. So just get rid of them. Keep your followers, like the people who want to see your feed and are there for the right reasons. Those are the people that you want following you. I think your Instagram will be so much better off if you have 2,000 followers, they're all girls, they're all there, love your style, they're buying from you, they're engaging with your content, that will speak so much better to a brand than someone that has 50,000 followers and then they go through their followers and see that they all have like a different language in their profile and you don't convert any sales for them that type of thing. So just get over the follower number. That means less and less these days. Just delete and clean up your Instagram following and you'll have a lot more success when it comes to working with brands. Next, when you take the time to post something, don't forget to tag your location and add hashtags into the mix. I'm gonna go into hashtags again in my next topic, but posting your location, the majority of my followers on Instagram are relatively in my location. I'm in Atlanta. All the girls that I actually talk to and that are invested in my in my brand and what I share are mostly from Atlanta or the surrounding states. And people want to connect with other people that go to the same stores as them, go to the same food as them, they can take their recommendations, actually go to those places. So never forget to tag your location on your photos and also in your Instagram stories. Now, personally, I keep it safe. I don't tag like the exact restaurant I'm in while I'm just sitting down to eat there. If I do, it's because I tag it once I'm leaving, just so I feel safer about that. Be smart with where you're tagging your location. Don't sit there and tag your house on all your posts because people will click the location and know where you live. So just be smart when tagging your location. Next is you always want to add hashtags to your captions. I try to keep it a little bit cleaner and I like space out my captions to where the hashtags are all at the end because they are somewhat visually distracting. I don't know, it's kind of hit or miss. There are, are people that do a ton of hashtag research. I haven't at this point. Uh, maybe I should, but I just always add them in there because I find why not. It never hurts to add them. Sometimes I have photos that 40% of the accounts um, that saw the hash saw my photo was through a hashtag and they haven't followed me. But sometimes I see that no one sees my photo through a hashtag and I use some of the same ones, which I don't think is the best practice, but it's definitely hit or miss when it comes to hashtags, but you might as well use them because the opportunity is there for more people to see your content. Right. My next tip is to comment on other posts. Yes, take the time to sit down and write an authentic comment. When I just like a bunch of photos, for one, I know I personally can't see everyone who's liking my photo because Instagram only shows you the last, I don't know how many notifications. So most of the time I can't keep up with people who are liking my content, but the comments always stand out when I'm looking at my notifications. And I typically always click their page for one, I comment back, but I also go to their page and leave a comment as well. And I think just taking the time to write a thoughtful comment, like don't just comment and be like cute and move on, like actually write something or if they're asking a question in their caption, 
just go ahead and write something authentic because when I get those comments, I always, those stand out to me and then I comment back on their photos. So it's just going to help be more likely to return the favor and the more comments and likes you get on your photo, the better off you are growing on Instagram. My last tip is how to kind of build more engagement when it comes to your photos. And this is a tip I heard recently, but a lot of people to help boost their engagement on their photo will get on Instagram 15 to 30 minutes before they post. I know that's a lot of commitment. Even if you just have five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever the time is, go ahead and start engaging on people's photos and then post your content and then stay on the platform and engage with those likes and comments that are coming in. You wanna always reply to all the comments as soon as they come in, give them a like, give that photo as much engagement. Yes, I'll even like my own photos, cause why not? I like it cause I'm posting it. It helps. So just stick, stay on the platform and engage with your photo as much as you can because Instagram prioritizes the photos that are more liked by other people that are following them. So you want to create and drive as much engagement to your photos as you can. Another way I've been doing this is lately I share my new post over on Instagram stories. Most people these days are just scrolling through stories. And so when you sit there and say, hey, answer this question to this photo, people will be more likely to go and click to the photo and engage with it. So I always share my latest photo on my Instagram stories to also help with that overall. Guys, this may seem obvious, but you do want to post good photos on your Instagram. If someone just has photos of um, weird things or the lighting's really bad, you're gonna be less likely to follow that account. So if you're creating inspiring content, just give it time. People will be drawn to it and they'll want to follow. And I find the more following that you build, it's like a snowball effect. So just be patient, keep posting really good photos. And if you follow these tips, hopefully you can help grow an authentic Instagram audience. All right, so those are my tips and tricks on how to build a authentic Instagram following. This I feel like will always change, so if I find new things that help with my following, I will definitely be sharing those with you guys as part of this blogger series. I would love if you came and connected with me over on Instagram so we can stay in touch. My handle is strawberrychicxo, and go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my latest videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.